With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hey up, duckies. This is Slogging It. Hope we're all well. The three Muppets back together. Plenty to talk about, but as always, we will start with a bit of a, a roundup of the past week. Eugene, what have you been up to, my friend? Interesting introduction. Are you referring to no run score duckies, or is there another? <laughs> no, no I, d- I did manage to get one the, on my last outing, but um, no, that's a, that's a very Midlands phrase, isn't it, Simon? Not, so, not I, I, I up me duck. So yeah, I just thought I'd go with a bit of uh, local dialect this evening so how are you my boy yeah all good thank you all good well i say all good got selected for the ones this weekend and failed it for 50 overs before the heavens opened so did absolutely squat all except for field in the dirt which was lovely ah yeah no obviously just what just dreadful weather any games completed in in middlesex at all i know we only had one game completed in knots I don't want to go into it too much because there's a little bit of tension between the two teams. We were the only team not to complete. Oh, dear. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not bitter about it at all. I can tell you that much. <laughs> I mean, we can, we can quickly find out who it was against on play cricket, so you might as well tell us who it was. Uh, another middle six side? But yeah, go and do your research. Go and do that. He, he knows neither is going to do that during the recording. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's far too lazy. Right. Okay. Any? No. Nothing else of importance or excitement to talk us through. No. Just watching a lot of the T Twenty. Watching a bit of the Euros. I was just saying to Simon, I actually was watching a bit of the French game earlier. Um, yeah. yeah, I watched the first half of that. Yeah, but just on that quietly, I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw this as well, Simon. Austria should have had a corner, blatant corner. Given a goal kick, France go down the other end and score. Yeah, I did see that. I don't. I Austria should be losing their absolute minds at that. That is pure incompetence from the referee. Anyway, Simon, your week, dear boy. How have you been? Uh, yeah, all right, all right, steady. I think nice weekend, very pleasant. Yeah, nothing really. I don't play cricket anymore, so I can't really give any of my own personal cricket commentary. Well, neither do I. Yeah, you still play for the FCC, don't you? So I, I just talk well, about one, everyone else one of playing us cricket. 50. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Well, we had a, we had a nice chance to catch up for half an hour last week, didn't we, Huge? We're at the most beautiful of schools at Charterhouse down in Surrey, which was... I mean, it, every time you go to one of these big, posh private schools, they all look like Hogwarts to me. They're incredible places. Yeah, I mean, what a what a completely contrast from the two MCC games uh, you and I played. I played against Isleworth and Science School, which is a state school. You played against Charterhouse, and I can tell you now for free that they are the two of the most polar opposite buildings I've ever seen. We, so we were figuring out whilst there. I mean, because obviously the MCC is generally full of you know quite posh people, and somehow I've squeezed in. You know, maybe it's because I'm brown. I don't know. Maybe they're just trying to increase, widen the demographic pools. I don't know. But we, we figured out to send two kids, to put them two kids through Charterhouse, £720,000. I mean, it's going to be close to, a, close to a mil by the time the Labour Party finishes up next week. So let's not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, 
but yeah, we were, we, I mean, we're not a political podcast, obviously, but yeah, we were talking about that. Clarify, was that for the whole of their career, whole school career or just one year? No, 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 no. That's, that's, I think that was for five years. Oh, okay. For two children. Yeah. Some people just I mean, live differently. Still very expensive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's about 55 grand a year. So fully boarding, I, I assume they get fed for that. Uh, but what we do know is... <laughs> they um, get freaking foie gras every other meal for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, any tours and, and stuff is on top. So, yeah, if, if, if you want to send your kids to play cricket on it, it or go to in Barbados or go to South Africa on a hockey tour, they're about five grand per tour. So... You know, you, you're probably staring down the bones of 900 grand to put two kids through through school at Charterhouse. So, yeah, unlucky Rafferty, you won't be going there. Anyway, we should get on with the podcast. Great to be back with you. Lots to talk about. Obviously, we'll cover a bit of the Euros. We're going to cover the World T20. And we'll just see how we get on, I think. So, England. Did, did made it difficult for themselves, didn't they? Relying on Australia to beat Scotland, but obviously England and Australia have gone through from the group. But in fact, before we start with England, I think we've really got to congratulate Scotland for the showing that they've put up at this World Cup. They've been absolutely phenomenal, haven't they? Have they? <laughs> oh, England just shit. I'm just saying. <laughs> they, no, look, they they were okay. I don't think. Look. Simon and I were sort of chatting offline before you came on, Jono. We think that the pitchers have made everything a lot closer and teams look a lot better than they are. So, okay, but didn't the Australians beat them with only two balls to spare? And the Australians are a pretty good outfit. I mean, for, for me, I think that if you take the results into effect, uh, yeah, they, they, they played okay against Australia. I mean, David Warner clearly was the only one that got the memo about Australia not really wanting to win the game. But like, if, if you take the results into account, they're beating two sides that they should be in the mid Namibia and Amman. Right? They are far mm. better cricketers than the guys from Namibia and Amman. That's not slugging off Namibia and Amman. That's just pointing out facts. They had a, a decent nine, eight, nine overs against England before it pissed it down. And then they've got beaten by Australia. Like it's that group is probably the least in terms of what's happened. The outcome of it is the least sort of tumultuous, tumultuous group at the at the four. Because it's pretty much finished in the order you would expect it to finish in. But would you okay for that uh, fair? I accepted. But would you not have expected Australia to beat them far more convincingly than they did? Yeah, but I think that's more on Australia. I, I think it's a real good part. I, I think if if Australia turn up bothered, really bothered to that game, and it was clearly on a far better pitch than all the other games have been played on, so that that in itself may have played it slightly like batting first. All of a sudden, there's not the stuff in the pitch you, the Australians rocked up and they didn't look like they were bothered they didn't care if they won or lost they thought they should win but they didn't really seem how many people they arrested they arrested half their squad yeah. half their team did they fair enough so I, I, I yeah. well personally personally I would like to congratulate Scotland I think they showed the best of themselves and I think that they they can be hold their heads up high to be fair, uh, with, with the performances that they've put into that group stage of the World Cup and can probably count themselves as unlucky for not going through, to be fair. Especially, you know, England, England, the the way, and obviously the pitch was very difficult against Namibia, but England were probably half an hour from going out through a no result against Namibia. And so, you know, I, I think Scotland deserve a lot of credit for the way in which they've performed at that World Cup. So, you know, Simon's and Simon's a a negative Nigel and wants to say that the Australians didn't care rather than congratulating the, the, the Scots, which is his prerogative. But, but yeah, I'd like to personally congratulate every, every Scottish person to ever walk the earth on, uh, the, 
the the performances of their national cricket side in the recent group stages of the World T20. But let's let's do a bit of an and then a comparison, shall we? Do we think New Zealand played worse than Scotland or or better? Don't know. Didn't watch any of the New Zealand stuff. I saw that they got bowled out by Afghanistan for 75 and, you know, I don't know, you know, do you get out of some, yeah, I, I don't know, maybe maybe New Zealand have been unlucky. I mean, obviously, that that bowling performance today from Lockie Ferguson, three for none or four, I've never seen anything like it, but they were playing against Papua New Guinea. I think the Papua Week third 11 bowling team could probably give them a bit of a run out, but, you know, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I haven't really seen as much of the World Cup as I'd like, to be honest. I, there's just There seems to be so much sport going on at the minute. I just don't really know what to watch. Yeah, it's... it's... I think this is my question. So I mentioned this a minute ago. I, a question I wanted to ask you is, and I'm not trying to slag this tournament off before it's finished, because it could still turn into become a, a, a fine tournament. You've got some interest with the USA making it through. You've got that like minnow thing going through to the Super 8. You've got, and then you've got seven sides that you would have expected other than New Zealand not getting through, which I called as me, one of my core semi finalists. But, but you, you'd say every, everything else is pretty much gone to plan other than, like you said, the two items being the rain making the England Australia group slightly more interesting and then New Zealand not getting through out of that group. Pakistan are always going to be. Who knows, rocked up, but everything else. Ireland for me will be one of the most disappointed. But my question is Is the T20 World Cup now just a fundraiser, or is it actually the showpiece event for short format cricket? And the reason I'm asking what ex- expand on fundraiser. No, oh, is it is it just an, an advertisement? Like it, ad, 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 supposed to be an advertisement to try and develop the game, or is it actually the showpiece event? And we've seen this in other sports. I'm not just saying it's it's happening within cricket, where we've seemed to be now using the World Cup or or what is apparently the showpiece event. We saw it with the football going to Qatar. You, you've seen it with various other sports. The, the next rugby World Cup's going to Japan. Or no, two two tournaments ago was in Japan. But that's, it's not a hotbed of rugby, the same as Qatar's not a hotbed of football and the USA isn't a hotbed of cricket. It's, it's fucking hot in Qatar, though. Yeah. It is hot. But that, my point is, it's not. This so what's supposed to be the pinnacle of the sport and the spectacle of cricket is being ruined because they've held it. they've had to hold it in the West Indies to, in order to give it an amount of credibility in the middle of the rainy season. And then... In the US, where they're transporting pitches 8,000 kilometers to try and drop into makeshift grounds and, and all this kind of stuff, is it what is now the point? Is it to decide the best T20 side in the world, or is it to decide whatever? Is it? Are they not sharing the wealth? Are they not trying to share the wealth a little bit? Because obviously that will have pumped a fair bit of money into USA cricket. Or is that is that kind of your question? Yeah, I guess that's exactly my question. Okay, so they can't just hold everything in England, Australia, New Zealand, India, wherever. They're probably not, they're not going to hold an international tournament in Pakistan at the moment. I think the 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 big problem. You know, let's say the the fact that it's the rainy season in the West Indies, which is ridiculous. We had the same argument when we were saying talking about the the last T Twenty World Cup when it was played in winter in Australia, pretty much. You know, the the cricket calendar, as we've talked about a lot, is so condensed these days with all of these different franchise tournaments, which seem to take precedence over anything that the ICC wants to do, which I. We again, we've spoken about this before and said how ridiculous it is. They're having to shoehorn it in at inopportune moments within the calendar just to try and get these things in. I would personally prefer to see World Cups of any format be done every over four years. We have spoken at length on this podcast and on a number of occasions about, you know, transferring this conversation into the World Test Championship. 
you know, I personally think, and I think you guys have agreed with me previously, that the World Test Championship should be done over a longer period where everybody gets to play everybody the same amount of times because then that makes it a fairer thing. So, but I, yeah, so I, I agree with you in the sense that I think that they are, you know, didn't we say there's a World Cup every year of some description until 2027 or something, which is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Huh? There's an ICC tournament every year. I think it should be every four years, whether that's a T21 and like they do with the Euros and the World Cup, have a T21 and then two years later have a 50 over one. I think that'll die a death soon anyway, but anyway, that's a different thing. But I, I just, I personally think if, if like the weather in America seems all right, other than in Florida at the minute, but because it's on the same belt as America. So I, I think it should be played on the best pitches. And unfortunately those best pitches are South Africa, India, Australia, England. And, but I think the way that it could be run better is if the ICC, like, like this tournament's been held now and there was one 18 months ago. If they were to do a tri series or something and get the US involved, or a, just not a World Cup, say like it's the USA, the West Indies, England, and India, for example. Like they used to do the, the tri series, didn't they? It, it happened in England when a test, a test team would come in normally in sort of May, June, and then another team would come in July, August, they'd have like a try one day series or whatever. I, I think the, there's no doubt for me that the US or the, the Minnow nations would benefit far more from playing five, six games against these top sides than they would do from playing on poor pitches in, in where, where it's being played. And then you could, you could, you should, you should hopefully get the results and like uh, America will be able to get some of their results like they get it against Canada. Um, if you were to let's say, have a five tournament, five team tournament where England and India went and it was Canada, West Indies, uh, US, and you were going to go and play in and around America, fine. I just think to call it a World Cup is, or to have a World Cup there now, is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, I think one of the other things is maybe a bit of bit of better preparation. It was interesting listening to the New Zealand commentators today talking about how New Zealand did not have one warm up match on any of the facilities within the US or or West Indies. So they've basically come off call it IPL pitches where they're you know pieces of the M twenty five as an example, and they've had no time to adapt. So therefore they haven't adapted, you know, they've carried on trying to play the way they're playing. And I think that's taken out quite a bit from the skill in, in what these games could have had. Um, you know, it was interesting, David Miller, top scorer with 59 in on that New York pitch as an example, or 51 balls. Mm. You know, I think there was only 550 scored in New York in total in all of the games that were played there. But for me, cricket's not just about, you know, whacking it out the ground and, and all that. I think the adaptability of which some of these teams have shown and arguably, and you know, I, I've took them to get into the semi-finals, Afghanistan, because they play on in different pitches, so they have the ability to adapt. Which is why, when you look at the stats at the moment, you know, Gubaz is the top run scorer, and Faruqi, uh, the left arm seamer, is the top wicket taker at the moment. So, uh, and by the way, they've still got to play one more game. You know, they've still got to play against the West Indies tonight or, or, or in the early hours of this morning. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, don't look past the, you know, don't be too surprised when Afghanistan or if Afghanistan get through, should I say. Um, something that I, I think we can probably draw parallels with, and we're not a football podcast, and, you know, I'm a fan of football. I think each are a fan of football, but we're not mass, massive football fan. Um, so much so that we chose to watch the golf last night, Simon, didn't we, rather than the actual the England game for the majority. There are parallels being drawn at the minute between the English football side and the English cricket side. People, a lot of people saying that under Matthew Martin, Josh Butler, the English white ball side is now looking a lot more kind of circa 2015 when we were really struggling than it was for all those uber successful years under Owen Morgan. And then you look at the England result last night where they go one nil up, but then they sit deep in the second half inviting pressure on rather than trying to kill the game. 
Now there is no the, England could win both the Euros and the World T Twenty, and then it, but then are we just papering over cracks? You know what are we are we too defensively minded at the moment in both the white ball cricket format and the national football side? Now, Simon, you've probably a better place to to talk about this, but huge. I mean, you know, if you've got an opinion, surely I know you will have on the cricket, obviously, but probably the football's not really your forte. I wouldn't think. Go Belgium. Eugen. Eugen. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I'm Victoria Cash. Thanks for calling the Lucky Land Hotline. If you feel like you do the same thing every day, press 1. If you're ready to have some serious fun for the chance to redeem some serious prizes, press 2. We heard you loud and clear. So go to LuckyLandslots.com right now and play over 100 social casino-style games for free. Get lucky today at LuckyLandslots.com. Available to players in the U.S., excluding Washington and Michigan. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. Have they not done a full, like, Eurovision Song Contest like, slash professional rugby and just let South Africa, like, tape or in, in yeah, this now? Just, just, like, or Australia, like, they did with yeah, Eurovision. Yeah. Obviously, the closest country huh. they could find to Europe to add to Eurovision was obviously Australia. Mm. And with the, the what was it, Irish League at rugby, they just decided to doff a couple of South African sides in. So it wouldn't surprise me if South Africa were in the next Euros. <laughs> For me, the only, the only similarities are that they seem to be trying to shoehorn players in to unfamiliar positions based on what they've done in recent thing, whether that's through the cricket with the fact they're picking jacks and they're picking opening batters to then go and bat in the middle order or with the football with them picking Trent Alexander-Arnold because they go, we've got to pick him. He's good even though we're playing in midfield. That's where the similarities kind of are for me. I don't think the problem with this England cricket side has been that they've been too negative. I think if everything has been the other way around. They've been trying to hack it to all parts and not actually looking down at the pitch and going, maybe we don't need to try and get 250 today. Maybe if we get 160, it's actually getting us in the game. And like we spoke the other day, I think certainly with this cricket team, I think they panic. I, 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 and whether that's through the coaching staff or whether that's through the captain or what, I don't quite know. You, but you watch, you watch Joss Butler captain Rajasthan and that's not, the MO of their kind of thing at all. So I don't know. I, I, I think the side that ironically they pissed picked against Namibia is a far more balanced side. Use, using Harry Brook at four, Moeen five, Sam Curran, Livingston, them to them back in the middle order is a far better balance. What was it? Someone did the mass. The other week, the, the, a few years ago, I think we actually spoke about it during the last T20 World Cup, where a number seven on average faces four balls mm. in a T20 fixture. So, uh, uh, it'd be interesting. Uh, everyone like Liam Livingston looked like he tweaked an aorta or pulled a love handle, as Eugene put it on the group chat, swinging out of his boot laces at the last few balls. Which, I mean, that first one, it was mental, but. Uh, no, I know. Yeah. Hopefully we see the English England side switch their balance around and, and play, just get the best players doing the best jobs. Oh, I can't account for the English football side, but I can. Look, I don't think that the cricket side have had a bad start. They were almost very unlucky with the rain against Scotland mm -hmm. and almost very unlucky with the rain against Namibia. You know, they lost to Australia who, in my opinion, were and are the better side currently. So, you know, that's that. 
you know, oh, it's just, it's just one of those things. Would, would I have said, I mean, would I have said that England were going to beat Australia? I didn't think they were. Um, so from my perspective, I don't think that they panicking in any way. I just think they might've been very unlucky. I think it's going to come down to now, you know, if you look at the group that they're in, are they going to get through that group? I don't know. So the group it's pretty the, interesting. So you've got, let's go through the groups because I know England are in a group with USA. Who else are they? And West Indies and South Africa. Okay. And the top two to go through. So yes. you would, st I would still back England to go through that group at the expense of the USA and the West Indies. I think England, South Africa will go through that group. Two of which were my picks for the semi-finals, um, a couple of weeks ago, and you would expect Australia and India to, to go through from the other group. Again, who are my other two picks, which will be the first time I've ever got anything, anything like right. Do we think then that, and maybe it's just a personal thing, but all, a lot of people that I speak to are not, you know, in love with the Butler and Mott combination. If England do make the semi-finals and then go out, is this papering over the cracks of a, a partnership at the top end of that white ball England cricket team that are that actually isn't fit for purpose, but it, it, the ECB then offer Matthew Mott and Josh Butler the opportunity to carry on or, uh, you know, the people are, are, are I, um, am I and the people that I speak to completely wrong in thinking that these two aren't the right people for those two respective roles? Well, they the coach and captain when they won it, right? As we, as we found out last week, and, and this when is we, like, we, we actually spent a little bit of time looking at it. And the, you, so a, a word that you, the argument, the thing that people will say is, oh, they were just riding off the back of the coattail. You didn't have to change anything from the 50 over kind of event. So it's just the, it's an easy thing to go at. It's a little bit of an easy thing to go at. I don't agree. There's obviously something wrong because it's not, the players don't look as comfortable the players don't seem to be behaving in the same manner as they're not, there's not that same thing. Yes, the wickets they've been playing on haven't been great. And a lot of people have called the England signing all formats of cricket flat wicket bullies, but I don't know. There seems to be a disconnect. And so is the parch, is the pair of them carrying on probably untenable? The press will see to that. The press are already decided short of a win in this tournament and that bit done. That seems clear to me anyway. That anything short of a win would be a failure, which I think is a bit harsh when you're looking at some of the other teams in it. But there is no doubt there seems to have been some mixed up thinking and and a little bit of a weird messaging. But I don't think I'm unfair in saying this. I think whoever wins this T20 World Cup is a lottery. I don't think. Look, there's skill. I get this skill, but you're going to have to be playing on the right pitch with the right bowlers at the right day. So it's going to come down to selection. It's going to come down to match management. And even if England do win it, by the way, I still think one of them will go. Don't know which one, but I think one of them will still go because when you could John, to your point, it's just papering over the cracks, mm. you know, it's, it's, and again, would we have said this if they were nice pitches and they were scoring 200, 300, 400 in a T20 game? No. Nobody would have said anything. I just don't know if people are in love with Matthew Mott, weirdly. I, I think Joss has obviously got a huge amount of admirers and, you know, fans and, and what have you. But I just don't think people, people for whatever reason, haven't really taken to Matthew Mott. I don't know whether it's the, the debacle of the 50 over World Cup in India or what, but he, he's... His paper seems to be tainted for some reason. You know, all the people that we talk to about cricket, certainly all the people I talk to about cricket, people just don't seem that enamoured by him. And I don't know what, you know, like when we said last week about when he was the coach of the Australian women's team, he could basically send 11 out of the best 30 women's cricketers in Australia out to play most of those games and they'd have walked past anybody because that's how much better than everybody else they have been, uh, with the exception of England at times. But, um, yeah, I, I, we, I don't know. People just don't seem to have taken to, to the coach. He, he doesn't seem to have that huge amount of love that other coaches have had previously. I think he's probably got a bit lucky that he was, he was signed, signed. He was put in place at the same time as Brendan McCullum was made 
the, the Red Bull coach and that, that saw a huge flip in performance, love for test cricket, everything else, almost instantly. And everyone kind of, you, you could see the way that it was written. Everyone just assumed that whoever got that white ball job was going to walk in and it was going to be more of the same and it was going to be dead easy to just carry on. But cricket don't work like that. Sport doesn't work like that. Thing you, you can't just keep rolling things forward and expecting the results to, to just keep being the same. People learn, people develop, like things change and he probably has tried to put his own spin on it, but then you've probably also got a lot of people that are going, well, why are you trying to change it? But I, I think some of the, there's some question marks over some of the selections and bits and bobs like that. Yeah. Like I said earlier, they, they seem to be trying to pick, just pick the 11 best players and then figure out how to make it into a team, which doesn't necessarily always work when you've got multiple people who normally do the same role in their sides. Like you looked, for example, at the previous T20 World Cup, when everyone was saying, well, can we move players up to open the bat in? And they went, no, they bought Hales in and that would arguably a master stroke and for the, the kind of tournament that he had, but they bought a specialist only batter and when they needed a specialist only batter best, they got injured. They had an only batter, they replaced them with an only batter. This time they've not picked, you look at the three, the guys batting three and four in, in that tournament were Milan and people like Joe Root was in the like on the fringes of it, but they've gone, no, we want opening batters. So they've gone Bairstam and Jacks is your own soul of like the three guys that have come in and you go in, well, they're all, they all want to bat there where your captain and best player wants to bat as well. So I just think for me, there's been the kind of muddled up thinking a little bit. Right. Maybe okay. Predi to deal with it. Predictions then. I, I'm going to allow you to to repredict Simon, but we'll all we'll all predict. I mean, you've you've heard mine, but who's going through? What are the semi final lineup? Eugene, South Africa, West Indies, Australia, Afghanistan. No India. No India. No England. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I decided to gloss over the no England bit, Simon. I mean, if you look at the more recent results that we've played in the West Indies, they have sort of be better pitches. Like you look at that Scotland, Australia pitch, a lot of them on games might be going back to Barbados where it wasn't necessarily the best pitch, but it was still better than, I mean, my front garden is better than New York. So that's, and that's probably a trench. So and you'd like, you, you'd think that with it being on the better pitches, you, your top four are probably going to be South Africa. Three of them are definitely going to be South Africa, India, and Australia. If England play anything like they should be the way, but that would be the one for me, given previous form. And Afghanistan might throw in Afghanistan have looked like the best team so so far. Whether that continues when the wickets get a bit flatter, and. I'll give you one thing. The game on Thursday when England take on the West Indies, that's played at St. Lucia. Has there been and any game been played? okay, there? hasn't it? So... The yeah, Darren Sammy get ground. Yeah, so you'd back the big ball, I think. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's where I, that's, yeah, that's where my money is as well. You just gone rogue with West Indies and Afghanistan, but you know, that's, that's just what Eugene does. You know, we, 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 I'm certainly not surprised by that. Loves throwing spammers in, in works does our Eugene. Okay. Well, look, I think we've, we've, we've covered off a lot of what we wanted to tonight. Simon, obviously it falls to you to, to finish the podcast with, with your not quiz, because it's never really a quiz, is it? It's just a bit of a snog, marry, avoid type thing. But what have you got for us this evening? Well, I had, there's, a, there's a guy that I work with that knows I, I do this. And every so often we have a little chat, normally about half an hour when we're supposed to be doing work just after lunch, uh, about whatever's going on in cricket. And he, he asked me a question that I've not really thought about. 
he was still, and we've mentioned it the other week. Obviously, the the ECB have announced that they're selling off forty nine percent of each of the hundred teams. It'll raise, well, it could be anywhere from thirty five pence to a billion quid. Right, we don't know. But he was saying more down the four day route. Do we think the with those franchises? then having significant more investment, would the ECB be better off trying to use some of that money to increase, to move four-day cricket into a franchise model, but play it now? Obviously, now with the weather out, it wouldn't be shit in this country, but normally you're talking like June, July being decent on September, uh, August being the 100, and then September being the end of the four day season. Like for me, it was like, we obviously discussed it before. So you go into more of a South African style franchise model, but still keep first class cricket underneath it in maybe put some money into like the outgrounds a little bit sort of there. So you, you, you use Scarborough and some of the other grounds. So you're getting the games more moved around the count, the country, trying to get investment, investment or people to buy into it that way but still having your, your eight franchise teams. Because for me at the minute, if you were to play four-day cricket now, yeah, your one-day players are off. But if you were to have, let's say, a Northern Superchargers against a Lightning or a Superchargers against a Lightning and do what they did in South Africa and take out the, the zone, and it was going to be Stokes, whoever else from there, against playing against the likes of Jimmy Anderson and Keaton Jennings and all these guys that are scoring on in that would that mm. be better for the test booked out rather than playing what can only be described to the fact that we've not even mentioned it tonight is a mickey mouse t20 tournament that no one's going to no one's talking about no one's buying into it anyway so i was I, as we i told you this off air earlier i was having a conversation earlier today with one of the professional umpires and as I do, when I see him, I say, oh, you know, what's your calendar looking like? And I know he's been doing a load of blast games and this and the other. But then he's going back to do, I think, three or four weeks of, or, or no, maybe two games of championship cricket, two four-day games, and then he's back into the blast. Like, the calendar of cricket in this country at the minute is an absolute mess because everything has been, it, the, again, like we were saying about the World Cups earlier, they're trying to shoehorn them into a calendar that is so condensed already that it becomes an impossibility. You know, it, are we going to start seeing more injuries from people having to change the way that they bowl in different formats and so on and so forth? I, I don't know. That is that is yet to be confirmed, and we probably won't know that for a few years yet. But the are they going to franchise out? Championship cricket, no, I, I don't. I don't think they will. I think there'll be far too much pushback from from members. Yeah, and in a weird way, Si, you know, and and forgive me for trying to draw parallels to something a little bit left field here, but you know, like so, the golf club that we play at, there's obviously all of these different, there's these plans to basically rework the course, aren't there? And that eventually mm. will go to a vote. Now, when we were talking to a committee member, when we turned up there at 6.30 yesterday morning, he was saying about it going to a vote. Straight away, my mind went to, well done, if all this work to get the course into what they want it to be, it's going to take 10 years. There should be a weighted vote, I think, towards the people that are still going to be able to play the course in 10 years. Because what you, what you find is you've got younger people who are a bit more progressive in their thinking and are quite a bit more willing to accept change if they think it's going to be better for things moving forward. Whereas... Older people, in general, are only interested in what suits them for the rest of the time that they're going to be on this planet. And so older people are more secure with what they've got now and don't really give a shit about what's, what's good for the future. And I think that's the same for the county championship because the people who go and watch the county championship are generally retired people who quite like to go and sit and eat their own sandwiches that they packed up in the morning at home and just go and sit with their mates and buy two pints for throughout the day, take their own sandwiches, eat their own food and feel like they're giving back to the game. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, 
they're not giving back to the game. They are not pumping the amount of money required to keep currently championship cricket afloat in this country. But they are the people that will vote with their feet or talk with their feet and talk with the ballot papers because people, unfortunately, genera generationally, people of our generation can't be asked to go and vote for something because we're all too busy trying to make a living and trying to, you know, better ourselves and better the environment in which we exist. So we don't go and vote. We, we you know, fair, we might go and vote in the general election, but we're not, we haven't got the time. Everybody's too busy to go and go to a golf club AGM and, and vote. Now that's, that's a problem because if you, if you're not willing to vote for something, then you can't complain about the results of it. But there, I, I just think that the way that the world works these days is that you'll get old people who vote for something or not vote for something because it doesn't suit their, what they what they want because their interests are only in what the, the here and now and what's good for them in the next 10 years that they're able to play golf or able to watch cricket. Whereas actually, if, what is better for the game or better for the golf club to, to bring it back to, you know, to Sherwood Forest? Well, actually, the thing, the better thing for the course would be to accept the changes and move it forward because it's going to make it a better golf course. But the problem is because the youngsters won't be able to go and vote either through work or other commitments or whatever, the, 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 the problems will kind of always keep rumbling on and rumbling on and rumbling on because you, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a mess in that sense. Now, I don't know if the young people should have a bit of a weighted vote, or, or is that deemed to be unfair? I don't know. They're certainly not going to, they're not going to, even if they wanted to do that with county championship cricket, and they put that to a vote of everybody who's a member of a of a cricket club, I guarantee, like, you know, whether it's every Lancashire member or every Yorkshire member or whatever, people who are members of Yorkshire and Lancashire or any other county of the 18 that exist, Everyone who goes to watch County Championship Cricket will put it in their diary that's probably still handwritten to say, I need to vote against this on this day at this time. People who would vote for the progressive route will probably have it on their diary that will come up on their Apple iPhone or whatever, and then within five minutes they've got something else to do. And so that because they, their mind's so full of this A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, they will. They they either won't have time or whatever, and so we the, the game can't move forward when when done in that way. So I, I think if they are going to do it, anything that's progressive almost needs to be taken out of the hands of the fans and entrusted to the people who've been put in the positions of responsibility to make those decisions, because otherwise things cannot move forward. Sorry, I'm aware I've just spoken for about fifteen minutes, and maybe none of it made any sense, but to me it did. Who are those people? Who, what? Because who are those people that you mentioned? Because when you look at the hundred, there's what, eight teams? You've got 18 county championships. You've got an indifferent number of T20 blast competitions. So from an identity point of view, mm -hmm. who are those people? And how do you get them to vote for the relevant, you know, So one of the, of the thing, pie? one of the things that I meant to say, actually, that was one of Sai's first points when he asked the question was about, you know, the, so if the ECB are going to sell off either 49% or 51% or whatever it is to, to outside private investment, every, so let's say the Trent Rockets, for example, that the stakeholders of that side are not Derbyshire and Leicestershire, who all have to put money in for, to, in order to buy into the idea of the Trent Rockets. So let's say 49% or 51% of the Trent Rockets franchise is sold, and let's say that is for 5 million quid. How much of that 5 million quid goes to those three counties, and how much of it is retained by the ECB? That's the kind of thing that I'm interested in, because, you know, maybe I'm pretty sure Tom Harrison will probably have something in his contract that if it was ever to get privatised, then he gets a cut of it. But... I, I, I don't know is, is the honest answer to that, but I, I they, they can't I not think it'll be something similar. They're, they're to, not going to, they're sorry. not going to front. Everyone said they won't franchise the T20. And what they did was they created a new tournament and told, told people, this is what we're doing. 
Right. They said no, there's going well, to be these eight sides. These are going to be the, the financial benefits to you. So for me, they, they're in a perfect position where if they can raise an amount of money, at the end of the day, everyone knows none of these clubs are sustainable. And the ECB, if, and I think the two guys, obviously you say you know them and you've met them and I don't know them. And, but if they are really adamant in progressing this thing forward, they could just say, no, you don't have any money. But I don't but think I, that I, would be I, a good way to go about it. But if, if they were to stand and go, right, they sell off 49, 51, whatever percentage it is and raise, let's say a hundred million for, for ease of numbers. Yeah. And they can sit and go, right. Okay. So that's each, eight, each 18 first class counties will give you a million each. And we want you to go and invest in your local cricket and infrastructure, whether that's go and do up a second ground. If you're not Lancashire, Yorkshire, Surrey, Middlesex, Middlesex like Go, go and go and mean that, and then you go and say to the other counties, right? You, you've all got a million quid. Either go and develop your own ground, but we want it to be a community facility where more people can come and get involved. We want you to improve transport links to and from the grounds, or you're going to be moving round. Go and split it between Chesterfield. Go and split it between Scarborough. Go and say right, Grantham, right and give some money to the minor counties, but then say to them, no, these franchises are going to be playing four day cricket. Then I'm not sure how it works in South Africa when they went to, to the franchise model, but if they're going to say to these counties, look, you, we're, that's where the money's going. Your 2.5 million pound a year that we give you currently, it's got to go on this because this is how we want to develop cricket. They will give the members of the clubs, no option. I don't know whether outgrounds are into it. it. And, and this is like you look at, you look at Chesterfield, for example, Queen's Park, which, is a, which is a beautiful cricket ground. And they have Hampshire doesn't have one, you know, who Twickenham. Like, no, Hampshire don't have one. No. So, you know, you've got the, you've got the festival at Guildford, Worcester play at King's School. You know, they, but they, they, it's not, Yorkshire play the Scarborough Festival, obviously, Langshire go and play at Blackpool, but I don't, I think they will do, they do like one game, maybe one four day and one white ball per year now at an outground, but I don't know whether it's, be, it, you know, they, they want to, counties want the, the revenue of F&B or food and beverage. Right, so they want they want people using uh, Lords is a bit of an exception, but um, then Notts Lisa will want not my Lisa Lisa Persehouse will want cricket being played at Trent Bridge because then she gets the F and B revenue. She doesn't want stuff, you know, like obviously workshop used no. to be used. And... Yeah, but I don't. They're not the 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 issue is that they're paying for multiple grounds and multiple grounds upkeep. They're not making money from food and from food and beverage revenue. Right, when bog standard county game with thirty people watching, the wages of the staff to man the food and beverage stand will be far more money than they're taking. Even at Lord, when I played it, when I was on the MTC ground, there, there'd be a first class game going off at Lord. There'd be less than thirty people there, but mm. all the food and beverage stands would be full, fully staffed. And so you're going, they're not making money off that, which is my point. If you were to go to an out, I'm using our grounds as an example, but you, what you could then do is build stadiums like Lancashire have done, where the other week, the Foo Fighters were starting the UK leg of the tour in the middle of the cricket season at Old Trafford. Because they can sell 40,000 tickets. Like, they move to get to somewhere else. And, and that's what I'm saying. So all of a sudden you've got these months, the, you've got your four day cricket being played by your elite, but we all know who these guys are. If you were to take, have an amalgamation with your local, the hardest place to do it is going to be up north when Lancashire are basically Lancashire at the minute out of the first class counties. Yes, you've got Cheshire and all the other mine and some of the other minor counties, but Yorkshire, you've got Durham. And Yorkshire, once you start getting down into Knotts, you start getting a few more, you get down to Surrey where you can then go Kent and Sussex for ex Sussex, for example, you can then go like Essex and other people involved in Middlesex, whatever it might be. But 
I just think there's got to be something done to, or they, they will do it because they are going to give these clubs no option. If they if they can turn Trent Bridge into a thirty thousand seat stadium, which can hold forty thousand people, by your point time you put ten thousand people on the pitch, and they can be making one and a half million pound a gig. Yeah. I I went Mate, to watch Robbie Williams. You've got at, to be an idiot. Uh, I went to watch Robbie Williams at Old Trafford Cricket Ground years and years and years ago, right in the height of summer, like July. You know, and and these things can, these things can work, and that has obviously worked for Lanks, and so they they and they that's a decent revenue stream for them. Like you think about, so Lisa, I don't know if Becky went actually, but Lisa and some friends went to. I know, yeah, she went with Becky, didn't she? They, went, that, to, they went to the Forest, the city ground of the week. Now, I think that's the first gig they've held there in years and years and years. Like, why aren't people, why aren't football stadiums or cricket stadiums looking into these kind of options as to, as to you know, if Old Trafford can do it, Trent oh. Bridge can do it, and Edgebaston can do it, and yeah, obviously you're a little bit more susceptible to the weather in an outdoor venue, but that's the kind of look of the draw, right? Look at Spurs. Spurs is a multi-format stadium. Every stadium is going down the large public venue route. Everything is going to be multifaceted. Yeah. Stadia, different sports, 24, 24, seven, you know, 365 days a year. That's the way these, these stadiums need to. And work. what they will all need, Eugene, is tech, isn't it? And we know just the guy. We know just the guy. Seeing See, that's what I do. Yeah, but my, my kind of other point is the other the other thing you look at is you'd be turning county cricket into almost like New Zealand deals with their test cricket, which is where they know it's going to be smaller crowds for the test matches. They play them at out grounds. They're not out grounds, but they play at Mount Monganui. They sit and play at what's it Hadley Oval in Queen middle of and, and, yeah, yeah Oval, Queenstown yeah. stuff like that. And like and then when it comes to the one day stuff, or the T Twenty stuff, they're playing rugby stadium. Like ship a wicket in, bosh, bosh, they've, they've sorted out when they built the grounds, they sorted out so they can, they can withdraw seats and stuff like that to make this stadium work. It's not, why, why, I mean, I've played second 11 cricket at, at the biggest ground, grounds in the country and it is soulless. Oh yeah. Not, not just that, it's also a damn sight order when at heading you've got dark blue seating fucking everywhere and you can't see shit at the backward square leg. Like, whereas if you were, we were playing that at Pudsey St. Laurent, I don't know, like Scarborough, we were playing it at somewhere like that. And you're going, right, this is incredible. I, I went and played a game at Swansea where Sobers, it, the 6-6, six, six, beautiful cricket ground, amazing place to play like three and four day cricket. I, I just think it's twofold, really. I think it'd be better for the fans to get more involved if they did that and it'll be better for the ECB and I just think they'll force them into it. Do you know what I am interested in is I've just looked at how the Super 8s work too, by the way, and I've just seen that the Super 8s, all the games are played in one week. Mm. So come us recording this week, sorry, this time next week, there will only be one game left and that is going to be the Afghanistan-Bangladesh game. And we will have a very good indication as to what those semi-finals are. See, this is the point where someone could get on a roll. Yeah. Because then the semi-finals are both on Thursday, 27th. And then the final is on Saturday. Crikey, it comes quickly. I mean, it's much shorter than the IPL, that's for sure. Oh, Christ. And the big, and the big bash. The big, the big batches yeah. still have seven months left to run. Did it, did we did we answer? I, I, do you feel like you got an answer, or do you feel like your mate who you've spoken to like will have any kind of idea of what we think based on what we've said, or or what? Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it's for me, it's like two, it's twofold. It's like what what we think. It, it's difficult, isn't it? Because we can sit there and go, what we think should happen, but we can also try and figure out what we think will happen. Like it's, it's that kind of managing 
the different aspects of it and and yeah I personally money think talks. if you've got as many different types of cricket money. going off at the same time that you can drag players in from to different things. I'm not saying cancel the blast. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying playing it, play it at a level that's more appropriate to its coverage, to it, yeah, yeah. the people that are available and everything else. Mm. Here's a question. How many county games have you been to this year? Days? None. I can, and it's the same, it's the same answer for again, the past, been... I can tell you how many days okay. of county championship cricket I've been to since I stopped playing county championship cricket, right? And it's not. <laughs> the, if, same thing. So this, this is how romantic I am, actually. The last day of county championship cricket I went to, I took Lisa when she was heavily pregnant to Trent Bridge for a day when she, uh, it was on a birthday. birthday. Uh, well, at least, you really but, know how to show well, a woman well, a good it, mate, had a business meeting with Paul. I think that was the first time she ever met Luke Fletcher. So because he was talking to us from the boundary and shouting like we were just having a right laugh, I think she felt like she she knew someone famous. But but yeah, so that that was and that would have been what two, yeah, well, it, two years and two months ago. That's the last time I went to a day of county championship cricket. Which is kind of embarrassing, really, considering I work in the game. But, um, yeah, very, yeah. It's just, it, it was interesting. So the umpire that I was chatting to today, I was saying, you know, what what's the, and something that we mentioned on la last week, I think, I was saying, you know, people kind of now see the 100, and people there are a lot of people who are very anti the 100, but I, I think people are now more interested in the 100 than the blast. And I said, you know, the games that I've watched. So he was he was on part in a game last week that I watched, and I, you know, in one of the test playing venues, one of the test venues. And I said, it, it's half full, and he was like, yeah, but you know, the smaller venues, you know, you you look at a, an Old Trafford, let's say, or a, a Lords or an Edgebaston or wherever, you know, they're holding twenty plus thousand people, and so to fill them is going to be difficult. And I don't think they would fill them for the hundred, to be honest. But he said, well, you know, he's been to Sussex and he's been to Chelmsford and he's been to New Road and stuff. And those smaller grounds, they, they do tend to fill out for blast games. Is um, he going fishing at New Road? No, they seem to have dried it out. They've had a couple of helicopters just uh, hovering over the outfield, I think, just to, to make sure it's been playable for the last couple of weeks. What, what while the game's um, on? What, exactly, yeah. So, but yeah, so there, so there we go. Right, so as Eugene says, by this time next week, there will only be one more game left in the Super 8, so we will know probably, well, we should know by that point, England's fate. What do you think? If England do make it to the semi-finals, are they papering over the cracks by keeping hold of Joss Butler and Matthew Mott? Let us know what you think. We're available on Instagram, X, brackets, Twitter, Facebook, email, See, however you want to get in touch really but yeah do get in touch let us know what you think about what we're saying and whether you agree disagree you know we, we really want people to get involved um make sure that you like subscribe share let everybody know about your three favorite cricket morons and um yeah we'll catch up with you next week until then lots of love bye bye good play no, you are. Podcast Network.